Every now and then, a car comes along in the motoring world that stops the track and changes the game forever. You can think of cars like the Mini, the 2CV, even the Prius. Once they've arrived, nothing is ever quite the same again. But this car deserves to join that list. You're thinking the RAV4, perfectly pleasant, a game changer? Bear with me. So what was it about the RAV4 that was so unique then? Well, they took the SUV recipe that was so popular at the time and made it fun to drive. And when I say they made it fun to drive, they made it really fun to drive. The styling was pretty epic too. And when the prototype arrived at the 1989 Tokyo Motor Show, people could see that some fresh thinking was coming. And when the production version came, it looked pretty cool. And thus the recreational active vehicle with four wheel drive or RAV4 to you and me was born. So when the Toyota guys built this thing, they didn't go to the normal SUV parts. They raided every single line in Toyota's car division and fitted it all underneath. When you look at the spec sheet, then you see why this car was so special because they took a Corolla chassis. They then used bits of Camry drivetrain and then for suspension and trans, that was all nicked off the Celica GT4. So they took a family wagon, stuffed it full of rally car bits. These are my kind of people. But seeing as it's the driver's car, we really should have a drive. Do people still do that? The first thing you notice out on the road is the lightness of the controls, a wonderful Japanese quality. The second thing is that you really wish they'd fitted air conditioning back in 1994 because it's a little bit warm in here today. But the dynamic to the car are ace, it's so peppy, it's so brisk, it just picks up beautifully. It's a lot of fun, I have to say. It just feels like a jacked up hot hatch. Lovely crisp engine delivery, wonderful turning, and short wheelbase so it really rotates. It's just hilarious. This is not how you expect an SUV to drive. This really does feel like something much sportier. The only thing I can describe it as is a hot hatch that you can take to the farm. So you can see, can't you, why this was such a commercial success. They took what everybody needed, utility, and made it sporty. I just wonder how much of this DNA has trickled down into the new one. I think you better go and find out. So we've driven the original, it's time to drive the Descendant and see how it compares. The first thing you notice is so blissfully quiet, so blissfully cool, and in here things have gone up a notch in terms of luxury and kit and safety and you name it, and tech, it's all there. This thing feels pretty much like a Lexus. You can see that Big Brother's having a very desirable effect on the Toyota brand. It feels very cosseting in here, it's ridiculously comfortable. And it's very big, the car has grown. There's a lot more legroom. Of course, you could get a five door in the original RAV, but this one is only just a five door. The other thing that's very relevant for today is of course this one is a hybrid. So it's very quiet, very economical, very ecological, best in its class in both cases, and just a lovely place to be. If you're not sure about taking the full step to electric, hybrid's a very nice halfway house, very nice starter pack for an electric lifestyle because you get the best of both. No range anxiety, does everything you want it to do. And this just feels like a vehicle that you could do an awful lot of miles in. I like it, it's still fun to drive. It's got that TNGA chassis, still chuckable, still goes around the corners really well, but it's got that little bit of luxury, that little bit of cosseting refinement. The gentlemen of my age quite like. It's all good. It's been great fun hanging out with the original RAV4 today. It's amazing to see how that car started, what it inspired and then what it became. But as for which one I'm taking home, I think you already know, for me, as always, it's all about the 90s.